Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a video featuring myself, Armored Chimera, and Sevea, and we're playing Tier 7 in a Division. And that's what this video is really going to focus on. How we work as a trio to maximize our effectiveness. I've done these videos in the past, and I just want to kind of retouch on some of the subjects and some of the newer things. So, as you can see, Tier 7, Sevea's in his Kiev, I'm in the Atlanta, with Armored Chimera in the Fiji. Now, normally when building a division, we always focus on never bringing three of the same class. So we're never going to be three cruisers, never going to be three battleships or three destroyers. Because you just don't have the flexibility when you're all driving the same class of ship. You know, if you are all cruisers, you don't have the tankiness or the stealth that a battleship or destroyer could bring to you. Uh, if you're all battleships, you just don't have the speed and uh, you know ability to kite and vision and all that to really help. So we always focus on trying to build our division out of a couple different ships that really complement each other. So Sevea being in a gunboat destroyer, I brought the Atlanta and Chimera has the Fiji. We are really about DPM, but we're going to do a very good job of stealth. And part of this comes down to the use of coordinated smoke, radar, and hydroacoustic. So seeing where we spawn, I knew near A there's this really low ground here. And I want to get as close to that, because in the Atlanta, you know, 11.1 gun range, I really don't have a lot of options. This will provide a nice break from any torpedoes, meaning they can only come from the one direction. And that's really a big part of it. So Sevea pops a smoke for Armored Chimera and myself to drive into. And as I said, we're kind of about DPM. <laughs> yes, there's going to be a lot of fires, but part of that's about torpedoes. forcing the damage cooldown. So if you're playing with a destroyer, you know he's got torpedoes. torpedoes Try to force battleships to use their damage cooldown on one or two fires. And then the torpedoes hit, you get a flood, your destroyer player is going to get massive damage. Um, and should your destroyer have just hit someone? got a flood you know that battleship or cruiser or whatever has wrecked so try to light some fires now unfortunately Armin Chimera can't really do this and this is a strategy that should really be applied on a bigger scale so if you in a game and you know someone's used the damage control pop it in chat call the target hit F3 focus people's fire on that person so obviously at this point one of my concerns is torpedoes. So we've got Armored Chimera, Hydroacoustic Surge, already asked for him to have it up. And we're really just trying to use our collective DPM, me firing HE primarily, Chimera firing his AP, to work this Congo down. You can see the first smoke goes up, so we pop another. And this might seem maybe a little unfair sometimes, but the coordinated smoke is part of the game, and there are ways to combat it. You'll notice torpedoes never came our way. That an enemy DD should have tried flushing us out with destroyers. It's just a big part of it. And we're sitting, you know, two cruisers side on in a pretty small smoke. With a bit of practice, you can learn how to hit people, and it's definitely satisfying in a tier 10 battleship when you've got a Minotaur just. You know, machine gunning. There's so many shells coming at you, you can really work out where they are and just delete them even in the smoke. Now obviously at tier 7, there's not as much radar and long range hydro, but it's still a factor. And you'll see here in a little bit, I'm not going to sit around all day. That isn't the point, it doesn't help our team if we just sit here. And unfortunately, Savea kind of pushed maybe a little high up got caught in between a pair of battleships, he got focused down, and we weren't really able to help him there. And that kind of sucks. I'm just going to zoom out and sit in third person, because you don't really need to watch me clicking in and out all the time. And you will notice one thing, Sevea just aced that Koenig, using his last breath to fire all the torpedoes and get things going. So it's at this point that Armored Chimera and I really have to make a decision. How are we going to help our team in this battle? And you really have two options. Well, maybe three. You could chase this Congo. Stupid move. There's a battleship over there. He should be dealt with. 
we could turn around and reinforce our flank at D and help them push in, or we can try to loop around behind. We go for the latter option for a couple reasons. One, right now the only cap point the enemy team has is Charlie. Even if we just get into it, we start delaying their points and allow us to get back on top despite being down a vessel. Secondly, there was that Akatsuki up here, and between Armored Chimera and I, we're really the best equipped ships to hunt him down. Between my radar, Chimera's hydroacoustic, we should never get caught out by a DD. So going hunting for the destroyer, definitely kind of the way you want to go. And you can see we're making quick work of him. And he doesn't really have a means of recourse. He's already fired his torpedoes past us. And at that range, he's not going to go invisible. I think he made a bit of a misplay. He should have just turned straight away and run. The second my radar lit him up, it's only 8.49 kilometers. And uh, I really do think he could have gotten away. But that's not going to be the case. I finish him off. And we've now pretty much cleared the flank. With the exception of that Congo. And that Congo is going to be one stubborn ship to sink. But still kind of just focusing on getting into Charlie, getting in behind, <laughs> helping our team. And you can see someone on our team, Cooper J01, our Congo, is confused how their Congo can heal themselves. And I'm really hoping that was sarcasm, because if they don't know how Repair Party works by Tier 5, they've got a long way to go. But back to Armored Chimera and I. Obviously, capturing C is important to us, so we decide to get just inside the cap, keep as much range as possible. The Dunkirk is a fast ship, and right now it is spotted by other friendlies on the map. So we can pop this smoke, and both of us can really focus our fire down, try to do as much damage. And with the Fiji being locked to AP, I decided to use HE. Two main reasons. Lighting fires is a very efficient way to knock a battleship down quickly. But we also don't want to oversaturate any of the sections and basically stop doing damage. Now damage saturation is something that you don't really see happen too often. But for anyone who's looked about, there's a couple of videos on YouTube where 12 Minotaurs are all shooting at Yamato. And at about 2,000 health, the Yamato just stops losing hit points. And that's because they're no longer able to penetrate where those remaining hit points are in the ship, as all the Minotaur's damage is to the superstructure and outer layers of armor. And it's definitely something until I saw that video I didn't really know was even a thing. But it is something worth focusing on. So if you're ever shooting a ship and you just see the damage stop, despite that same location previously have been giving you a lot of damage, you've probably just basically hit all the hit points out of that section. You can only you know, break the ship so far. So, you know, adjust your aim. You know, say you were shooting a whole bunch in the bow here, doing damage, it kind of stops, you know, aim further back. Switch your aim point, do damage somewhere else, and you should see that damage come back. But I get torpedoes in the water there, manage to finish the Dunkirk off, and... Well, things are not looking good for our team. The Congo in the back is dead. But it took two of our ships a long time. And the enemy team right now, well, they're looking pretty strong. Seven ships versus four. And our only real advantage is we have, well, had two of the caps and we're about to get a third. Unfortunately, they're about to get Bravo. We're about to take Charlie. We've got this Nuremberg here, and originally, Chimera and I were saying, let's charge right down the middle, let's get into Bravo, and do this. You know, go hunt that destroyer down. Seeing that Nuremberg, though, and once again, you know, low land, low line land, the Atlantis great loft on its shells, we're not going anywhere. We're finishing this Nuremberg off. We're getting at least one more ship off the map before we try running. So kind of back up, wait for his bow to poke around the corner, and just wreck him with first volley, second volley's out, Chimera picks up the kill, and well, that's one ship closer. Now it's only six versus four, and 
this is where we have a really tough decision to make. Our Nagato is on really good health, but Armored Chimera and I are not designed to get in close to a Colorado. Fortunately, Chimera's cooldown is off, but you'll notice on the map, and this is why paying attention to the map is so important, a cruiser was spotted coming down the channel. So I focus my guns as I back around, giving this Nagato room to actually drive through. And, you know, thank you, RefHat21. Had you tried to camp in this smoke along with us, we would have had no vision on anything. I do pop my radar there just to make sure I have this Belfast lit and I go to town. The Nagato tucks into a pretty safe location for him. And, you know, the Belfast last ditch tries to smoke, but he's on radar and he's dead. So as I was saying, the Nagato actually goes to a really good spot. By tucking in there, you know, he's not really getting focused down by a ton of ships. Unfortunately, this is where Maybe we do a bit of a dick move, but once again, the smoke is running out. We need to stay alive to keep doing damage. It's only five on four, and that Nagato is on a lot of health and can probably do a lot of damage. We finish the Colorado off, and then we run. Chimera and I decide the best way to help our team at this point is to capture points. We're ahead as far as the score goes, and that's a big part of this decision. If we were behind, you know, standing as a group is our best option. But we're head on points. We also happen to know, just because we've seen them a couple times, both the destroyers on their team are on pretty low health. So if either of us come across them, we can probably kill them before we take any real damage. And then the final piece is that Nagato is on really high hit points. They're going to be able to do a lot of damage before they sink. And hopefully delay this York and enemy Colorado, sorry, Congo, the Colorado died, from pushing around. And you can see it's kind of working. That York doesn't want to drive point blank around a corner at a Nagato. He knows he'll get wrecked. <coughs> and in the meantime, Chimera and I are able to get to Bravo and we make another crucial decision here. We're splitting up. Now I know many times I've preached, stick together. You know, there's strength in numbers. When you're outnumbered, you gotta stick together and focus things down. But once again, coming down to the points, we're only ahead by about 100. And you can see right here, we still are planning to stick together. And I'm kind of reasoning things out of my head. I see the Shiratsu is only on 1800 health. Our Nevni might get some damage into them. And Chimera does have one hydroacoustic search left. I'm out of radar, but right here I go, you go for the Shratsu. You can definitely take him, you know, make sure you get your hydroacoustic search up nice and early. Don't get surprised by torpedoes. You're gonna go capture A. I'm gonna go capture Delta. And hopefully we can actually just win this by points. That is the thinking. The York still isn't pushed around the corner. The Nagato is in a tough spot, and we kind of hung him out to drive by leaving, but really did not feel in that situation us staying was going to be beneficial. We would have been sitting ducks and Congo and York could really wreck us. Now maybe us being there collectively shooting might have helped, but that Congo for the most part would have been out of my gun range. So. We made the decision and we've got to push. You can see here in chat, a couple allies start telling me the DDs, like they're all in D, like don't go there, you're gonna die. And I'm like, what are you on? They're all at Charlie. And there it is. And they were just reading the map wrong, but I basically go, you know, please be quiet. Just let us do this. Chimera and I were in comms. We were really well coordinated here. I knew exactly what he had for consumables, he knew what I had. And at this point, what he has is one hydroacoustic search and one more smoke. And that smoke is the crucial thing. You know, the Fiji has much better range than my Atlanta, but I've got better detectability than him in my current setup. So the decision basically gets made, you know, you're going to push through A, 
he's going to get into kind of this area behind this island as much natural cover. In the meantime, I'm sticking as close to this coast as possible, just in case something comes storming around the corner, I can hopefully catch them out in a closer detection, particularly those destroyers. You know, if I go out wide, I get spotted really early. By hugging in here, there's a good chance if a destroyer does come around, I see them at the exact same time they see me. And, well, you can see maybe our plan's not working so great right now. We do have the caps. We're about to get Delta as I capture it here in about a second. And theoretically, with four minutes left, we will beat them. In the time they get 200 points, we are going to get 600. That's kind of the basic math. You know, look at how many points they need to get to 1,000, how many caps they have. Multiply whatever total they need by how many you have, and that's roughly how quickly you outscore them. The one limit can be the time. If you don't have, you know, 10 minutes, it might not matter. So right there, Chimera finishes off the enemy Mehan. There's still that unspoken Shratsu, but we know he's only on about 1,000 hit points. And I've got my guns firing. He's popped his smoke. He's safe. He knows he's not going to get wrecked. And because no one's paying attention to me, I'm just working them over. You know, that York is not shooting. He's going to be dead when this fire ticks. So now it's 2v2, Congo and Shratsu versus a Fiji and Atlanta. And now I'm feeling confident because we know exactly where the Shratsu is. It went to B. It left the Congo alone, kind of like we left our Nagato alone. But he's on such little health, I think he just felt maybe getting points is better. And unfortunately, that's going to leave this Congo very alone. You can see I've stopped firing. He's outside my 9.4 detectability. So I'm just chasing. I'm trying to just give Chimera time to build damage and get him wrecked. And it's about here that I start going, you know, how long do you have on your smoke? If we don't get this guy dead, you might be dead the second the smoke dissipates. And I'm telling him, come up in speed and start carouseling around this little island here. And you can see he's turning in. The whole idea being, if he gets behind that island, if he gets in here, he can just infinitely carousel that Congo. 150 points ahead as far as caps go. This one's in the bag if we both stay alive. You know, two minutes left, not going to be a problem. But then the Congo starts doing something weird. He's not shooting his guns. He's driving in a perfectly straight line. I start to wonder, did he just quit? Did he go, screw it, it's over anyways? Because he drives right into Camara's torpedoes. And, well, at this point, it's done. We've got three caps, only about 16 points to go. Well, exactly 16. And, well, we know exactly where that destroyer is, so we're going for him, but we're not going to get him before the game ends. And in the end, great game for our division. Personally, 680,000 credits, 8,400 experience, 120,000 damage and 4 kills. And a lot of that was made possible by Savea and Armored Chimera, using their smokes, cooperating together, focusing down targets. I just happen to be the one to get some of the kills. Part of that is my rate of fire. Some of it's just the fires taking people down. But all in all, it was made possible because we worked together and because of the decisions we made. And when you play in a division, you know, if you're three people, you're a quarter of your team. You have to make yourselves count and you need to be coordinated. That is the advantage to being in a division. And if you can't do that, you, you know, you're not going to have a lot of luck. And when you look at the stats, as I said, you know, or haven't said, but eight kills for our division, you know, I came out on top with Chimera just behind me. And even Savea, who died fairly early, is actually, you know, fifth place on our team, which kind of shows what he committed in that early spotting and then the damage he did to the Koenig he wrecked with all those torpedoes. As for my own damage, well, it wasn't too bad. You know, as you can see, I got a good chunk of damage on a lot of different ships, and that's really what the Atlanta does, and it's kind of what 
all these like rate of fire ships do you need to be hitting the targets that you have good shots on particularly with the smaller calibers because that's what the rate of fire ships have um because just throwing them at an armored bow isn't doing you good you know pick the targets that are side on hit them and then swap back to the lower health ones when they give you a good angle if you can manage that you're going to walk away with some really good money and some great experience and i think it's just going to be more enjoyable for you and for me just over 500,000 credits, 8,400 experience, and 24,000 experience for the commander that this commander really is for my Cleveland and the Atlanta. My Des Moines captain is well-trained and sitting up at tier 10, and I'm just making a new captain slowly. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and can take away maybe some tidbits for maximizing your own division play. If you did enjoy it, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. Both really help me out and keep me motivated. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'm going to have another one for you guys tomorrow.